What is good? Guys, it's your boy, this dude. And we have another episode of awesome, amazing animals. For today's subject at hand, we got the hermit crab. Let's go. We're going to be addressing exactly what is a hermit crab, uh, what kind of environments they're found in, what their day-to-day -day care is like, uh, how to build an enclosure form, their temperature gradients, all of that. We're going to go over all of this. So we're going to start with what is a hermit crab, right? I don't really know. Give me a second. So it turns out hermit crab, there's about 800 species of them, right? That's a lot. It's a whole lot. But it is any crab that has, how do we say, evolved to occupy empty seashells or mollusks or whatever. There are certain type of crab that have evolved to occupy empty shells. So whenever the shell that they're using isn't working out, they just kind of move to another one, which is kind of amazing. And I like hermit crabs for a couple of reasons. Once again, like I said, I know nothing about these animals, but I've been watching people take care of them since the early 90s very easy to take care of and that's one of the main reasons why I like them. Secondly, you can build awesome, amazing enclosures, huge, amazing, immense enclosures for these animals including water features, paludariums with fish in them, uh, many plants, all of that. You can go as natural as you want with this and then on the other side if you're pretty artsy you could leave a couple like decorated shells, pre-decorated shells just laying around in, in the enclosure and as you're hermit crab grows out of the shells that they're using you can just move into the shells that are already in there you can just leave them around and he can find his own home and find the one that suits him find one that fits him or her perfectly and I think it's kind of cool the hermit crab is not really gonna mind as long as it protects them it's gonna be fine and I think that's absolutely amazing and they say hermit crabs are incredibly hardy right if you get your uh, care down you could uh, expect to see these animals anywhere from 10 to about 30 years, which is crazy, but it makes sense. You know, they're, they're an armored animal, like they're, they're built for this. So if you take care of them, you take care of them inside, they'll take care of the outside, right? Yeah, I, I think that's kind of cool. If you get your care down, you, you look forward to having these animals around for a really long time. 30 years, it's kind of wild. Um, a lot of reptiles usually lived about 15, 20 years also. So um, it's, that, it's kind of, Kind of a solid lifespan it's a really good lifespan for an animal in captivity and although these animals are absolutely adorable becoming even more cute when you would put them in one of those beautiful handmade shells or hand painted hand decorated shells if their cuteness just goes through the roof although they are absolutely adorable these animals do not like to be handled which is okay it's okay you know what i mean you Put a couple of them in there and just let them live out their lives and, and build them a nice enclosure and watch them. Just watch them all. And not to say you can't pick them up, they just don't enjoy it. They're not like like dogs or cats. They're, they're not okay with it. They would rather just live out their lives. And that, that's okay. Like I said, hermit crabs are absolutely amazing. 20 to 30 year lifespan. These dudes are gonna be around for a while. You have a nice centerpiece or a nice, nice viewing enclosure for a long time. Uh, one that can go through many different upgrades. Uh, you can make it as big as you want, uh, include as many plants and, and water features and animals. There's just so much you can do with, with a hermit crab enclosure. And they say, although the name implies solitary, like hermits, like they like to be by them, that's not the case. Hermit crabs actually like to live in groups or units, you know, two or three, four or five. So don't just get one hermit crab if that, you know what I'm saying? If you're thinking about going into this, get a couple of them, give them a nice, 20 gallon long enclosure and remember that these animals are land dwellers so if you include water features just don't make it too deep we use paludariums over here all the time that are literally four or five inches nothing too deep right Not, nothing too deep but these are land animals right although they're crabs they live on land keep that in mind if you include a water feature just make it shallow now hermit crabs are foragers and diggers they like to dig and find whatever they're looking for they use their tools to do so. So in captivity, 
you want to make sure to give them a couple inch, inches of substrate. Uh, this is going to help with natural behavior. This is just what I'm hearing. It's going to help with their natural, overall natural behavior and also in their molting. So they can find little humid pockets inside of the substrate to help with their molt, molting. But um, yeah, give them a couple inches of substrate. Make sure that they can um, forage naturally and to also help with their molting. Because you, you don't want no issues with like an animal, a spider, a shrimp, crab. If their molt isn't successful and they get stuck in it, they I think they could pass. Well, I know for shrimp and crabs, definitely, if their molt isn't successful, they could pass away during that process. So you want to make sure that they have everything they need to molt properly. And when it comes to building an enclosure for these dudes, like I said, you want to include many pieces of cork bark, branches for them to climb on, uh, leaf litter, uh, live plants, and do the, the animal a solid and include a couple extra shells just randomly you can hide them under things if you want include a couple extra shells for them to grow into they may not have to be in their day one right but make sure that, that as time goes on you include extra shells for your animals to grow into they'll love it it's it's natural for them they, they find them in nature and they just kind of move out of what they're into move into another one so make sure they can replicate that same behavior in captivity and these animals will be around for a long, long time. Like I said, give them something that looks, you could do like edge of the forest where the sand meets the forest and just, you know what I mean? Put a little bit of sand, some water, and then a bunch of, bunch of branches and plants and just go crazy with it. They'll love it. That's their natural home, they'll love it. Now you wanna keep your enclosure anywhere from like 77 to 87 degrees. We'll, we'll say 75 to 85. Or 77 87 whatever and you want to in, in the mid 70s 10 degrees higher right uh, you don't want to get too hot you don't want them getting too cold and also you want the humidity you want to keep the humidity up it's about 65 percent maybe 70 percent and these animals are natural foragers they're gonna find things on the ground pick them up eat them you know what I mean so there is like dried foods prepared foods um, you've got like crab pellets that you can feed them. These animals need a lot, a boatload of calcium. They need a lot of calcium. So you always want to make sure to include that in their diet, whether it be in powder form or in pellet form, because they'll they'll crush it up and just eat it like that. Um, really doesn't matter to them. I think um, in the wild, they they crush up bones and things like that. Like they, they will have no problem getting through a calcium pellet. So either use a pellet or powder but make sure these animals have the calcium they need is for their molting for their shit their overall health in their shell just make sure that calcium is on point and they said in captivity a lot of the times when um these animals are molting the caretakers will actually place them in other enclosures because their their skin gets real soft um they're easy to to damage at that point in time so they'll take these animals very carefully and just move them into a separate enclosure or into a a small bin or something until their skin hardens back up before they go back in. Um, I don't know if that's absolutely necessary. I don't. I don't know if you have to do that. Uh, depending on the size of your enclosure and all of this, but um, yeah, I think that's a good practice. Whenever your hermit crab is molting, take him away from the group that he's in until he hardens back up. Put him back with the group. I mean, that, it makes sense. You don't want him taking any unnecessary damage. When it comes to breeding these animals, they say the males and the females start breeding as early as, and I don't know about age, but they say as far as size, from six to eight millimeters. Not big at all, so they start early. They start rather early, and they said the, uh, that they breed in seawater. I don't know anything about that. Um, I don't know anything about that process. Once again, I don't own these animals. Uh, I breed a lot of other animals. If you know anything about this breeding process, let me know. That sounds very interesting. And once again, these hermit crabs come in many different variations and colors. You got the Australian, you've got the Halloween hermit crab, you've got the Caribbean hermit crab, and that list just goes on and on and on and on. There's so many different types of hermit crabs. So when it comes to getting you one, I guess it really just depends on what you're into. What are you visually looking for? I'm pretty sure there's a lot of colors, there's a lot of different variation. You know, these animals have a lot of different um, colors in them. Yeah, I don't know what, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> and because there are so many different kinds of hermit crabs, 
I'm pretty sure the price point is going to be affected. I don't know if it's going to be like the reptiles or anything like that, um, where a normal animal will cost you $20, but then a morph is going to cost you $2,000. I don't know if it's going to be anything like that. Across the board, hermit crabs are typically cheap. You might be able to get a pair for $20, $15, just regular hermit crabs, right? And I'm gonna do some research to see if that price changes depending on like locale or color. We'll see. Okay, now check it. Locale and color is gonna affect the price point, but it's not extreme. Judging from what I've seen, there's not really, for one, there's not too many on the market. The price point doesn't change too much between. I seen some that were going for 14 to 15 bucks and then I think the highest was 45 bucks for a little trio or group. Um, not, nothing too extreme. Now I'm pretty sure the more rare, I'm not gonna say morphs, but locales of hermit crab, I'm pretty sure some of the more rare ones are gonna, gonna fetch a, a hefty penny, right? But from what I'm seeing, overall, hermit crabs aren't really too expensive. So that would be another reason to get into breeding or just keeping hermit crabs, just getting your overall care up with a species like this because they're hardy, they live for a really long time, they're, they're gonna enjoy a, a multitude of different builds and they're not too expensive. They're not too expensive at all. So why not, right? Get your practice up, go ahead. And you'll know you're dealing with a hermit crab absolutely and indefinitely if they leave their shell. A lot of other crustaceans have hardened shells just on their bodies. But your hermit crab has a soft body, so it has to protect it with other shells. That's why it does that. So, that's how you absolutely know that you're dealing with a hermit crab. Come to find out that there are two different main types of hermit crab. You have the ones that I was thinking of, the ones that primarily live on land. They stay on land 99.9% .9 of the time. That's where they eat, sleep, bask, mate, or not really, but that's where they do pretty much everything. And then you have the aquatic hermit crabs, which I knew nothing of, right? And these animals are the complete opposite. They do 99.9% .9 of their activities underwater. And um, also turns out that they are super popular with like saltwater reef tanks and in that hobby, right? So there's two main types. You got your underwater hermits, and you got your land hermits. I knew nothing about it, I apologize y'all. And remember we were talking about leaving shells in there for them to grow into. That is important because molting time these animals become very competitive for shells. Um, in the wild, they eat a lot of things that are in these shells and they take great care to keep the shells intact so they can use them when they are done, which is very smart. They become very competitive in the wild and will fight each other, sometimes even kill each other for shells. So if you're keeping them together, make sure that you have extra shells for them so Whenever they get into that, that, that molten time, there's no competition. Hey, there's one over there for you. Hey, there's one over there for you, bro. All right, we good. <laughs> Moving along. And they said that they have also observed these animals in the wild. When there isn't enough shells around, sometimes they'll just use something else. They'll just find something else that fits and put that on, which usually proves fatal. Because the shells are perfectly curved. They, they have evolved to fit those. But when they go putting their their bodies in other things, and then they grow inside of them, sometimes they can't get out, and it usually kills them. And which are usually, they say, create like a chain reaction, right? Because then you have the signal being sent off from this, this dead hermit crab telling other hermit crabs, hey, there's a shell of it. They use that same item that killed that animal. Absolutely horrible, but it's natural. So make sure that they have something to get into. Make sure they have a backup shell. No competition, no fighting, no deaths. And I just found out that the coconut crab is a hermit crab. And things are huge. They're like as big as sewer caps. They're, they're huge. And, they're, and they'll chase you. I heard they take stuff from people, um, eat other animals. I, I've seen this in like video. It was even rumored that Amelia Earhart it's rumored that her plane went down on an island filled with coconut uh, crabs. And you know what they do to bodies? They make them disappear. That's light work. That's light work to them. One of them things grabs you is this. It's gonna be a long day. And the problem with them is 
There is a lot of them. You're on an island with thousands of them. They're big, big as sewer caps, like I said, and they don't stop. They're not gonna stop coming after you. There is no sitting down and taking a rest, laying down, there ain't none of that. There ain't none of that. They climb and they don't stop moving towards their, their prey. It's, them things are terrifying, they're huge. Big hermit crabs, I didn't know those were hermit crabs though. It's wild. Now overall, the hermit crab is just an amazing animal. Come in very small, cute and adorable. You can decorate their little shells, send them off. Or coming in as big as the coconut crab, uh, strong enough to break a bone if they grab you. These animals are fascinating in many different regards. I would say if you go getting into keeping one of these animals, you keep it on the small side, right? <laughs> Anyways, I think this was another fun little day of research, rather. This was a this was a fun day of research, right? And uh, we're gonna do many more of these. We're gonna be looking into a lot of animals we don't know anything about. This is all things living. We we got a long, long road ahead of us. But um, yeah. Until next time, right? Your boy Smith. This is all things living. I'm out. <laughs>